And of course, it's all about, like you said, Jeff, the full appraisal. That's what we want to see. And we are going to be looking to these two women to really kick things off. Heat one of women's quarterfinals, Marie Francois, Elena Height. Let's hear more from Marie. Um, my thoughts are that I'm really honored to be here. I'm just really excited to see this event come to life. I think it's really good for snowboarding. I think that all the riders here are insane and anyone can take it, depending on who's having the best day. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous and I think it's gonna be a really good show. <laughs> You know, Marie, too, she is a legend and a leader in the backcountry, but she's also one of the most accomplished all-around riders in the field. She's had street parts, contest finishes, and now she, you know, makes makes it happen in Whistler. She seemed really confident as well, like in the lead-up. I spoke to her yesterday, she said she had a brilliant start to the season in Pemberton. Um, she just seems really focused. Having a little trouble on that first hit right there. I think one good thing for the women going in the middle of the, the whole round today is that they have a better sense of what the lines are. There's a little bit better visibility on the course, but it's not totally beaten up yet. Went for the, uh, the pillow that caused Sebi a bit of trouble there as well. Alex, there we go, picking there. himself up. It's really important to remember too that you know, as we saw in the men's first round is that you can fall on the run and it's not necessarily going to knock you out of contention uh, depending on how big that fall is. But if, if you're able to continue on, um, the judges are going to appreciate that and award that. And also the thing we should say is like in the men's heat, clearly in the first run, they were taking sighters. You know, they were gauging the speed. They were working out what the snow conditions were like. And they, we're going to see that the same with the women as well today, clearly. Look like Marie Francois was going for that that iconic method. I love her method. That's that's what I showed up for this year. I want to see her crank one of those for us. Well, Travis on Instagram said he was jealous. <laughs> said he wished he had as good a method as Marie. I do too. Don't we all? Yeah, they're going to just need a little, you know, first run, get to grips with the snow. It's clearly, I mean, word of the day has been sporty, I think, on the snow, hasn't it? Um, yeah, clearly pretty grippy. Going to have to get used to it. And we see just, oh you know, God. really. Well. Really well, having to navigate Mother Nature's whims today and adapt to that. And at the top, we have a woman who's no stranger to adaptation. She has dove into the backcountry in the past couple years after an incredible career in half pipe. Elena Height. Let's hear more from Elena. evolution of competitive snowboarding as we know it. Um, you know, since I've been in the industry, it's really only been the option to race or ride slope style or ride half pipe. And uh, if you wanted to be a backcountry snowboarder, uh, the film direction was the only thing you could do. Uh, and so this is really bridging the gap and giving uh, snowboarding this whole new avenue of like melding two sides of the world together. Elena really is the full package of a snowboarder who's pretty much built for the natural selection. She is a two-time Olympian. She has six X Games medals. She, and she has made the transition into the backcountry very flawlessly. But that pipe edge control, you know, that, that, that those foundational skills that she's got, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that serves her today. Last year, Elena edging out uh, Haley Langland and moving into the semifinals. I think Elena has a little bit of an advantage. She's been here, she's ridden it, she knows the general layout of the course. Although, talking to Ranian Diarge, the head of our park crew here at Jackson Hole, he was saying there's a ton of new features. They've been working nonstop for the last month, but even in the summer builds to get a bunch of new stuff going on. So uh, we'll see how, how that plays into Elena's run. Yeah, it's been a theme with the riders, hasn't it? The, the guys that were and the women that were here last year, they're working out how they're going to adapt, like how the experience from last year is going to serve them. I mean, the features, they're familiar, but 
so much work was done to enhance them based on the feedback from seeing everyone ride it last year. And then, of course, the conditions, Mother Nature has painted a completely different picture. Than totally last different year. picture. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and we, we've said this before, everybody's riding the same course, right? Like, nobody has an advantage as far as conditions go. Everybody's up against the same challenges, has the same pros and cons. And so uh, it, it is a contest. It's a contest for everyone to show us what they can do. Yeah, I mean, looking at the men, you think that the uh, those with a real freestyle pedigree obviously really shone. So I think uh, once the women get to grips with the course, it's going to be really fast. Like Spencer O'Brien coming up soon, it's going to be interesting to see how she does. And I know once she, um, she's got that first experience, that first run under her belt. There's the pillow. Yeah, I think one of the themes is just getting the speed right, isn't it? You know, there's definitely like a bit of a lack of speed on some of the features, but that'll be something that the, the women will all work out as we go through this heat, really. Yeah, they both had a, a ton of difficulty on their first runs. Um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. Uh, you know, this this being a unique contest format where it's head to head, even though they both had some falls, someone's going to be uh, the winner of this heat or this round. Can't reinforce enough, too. You saw Marie and Elena really supporting each other at the bottom. I mean, a lot of these women ride in the backcountry together during the winter outside of this. And when you're in the backcountry, it's so much about that crew mentality. Well, the camaraderie of the event while we've been in Jackson has just been amazing, hasn't it? You know, like, even as, uh, as Stan was saying and Pat then, like, all the sharing of information that's going on to help everybody through it kind of sums up the spirit of the event, really, doesn't it? Yeah, you want the more beta, the better with this course. <laughs> Had some uh, trouble in the landings, but Elena making those look, those airs look really good. What are you gonna do? Well done. Oh, we got 20. Well done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Up to the top. Back to the top. Okay. Faster, deeper, stronger. Faster, end. deeper, stronger. And just like they said, it's back to the top. So we're back at the top with the backcountry legend, star of the little things of fabric this past season, and the massively passionate environmental activist, Marie Francois. I think we're going to see a lot more out of Marie Francois and Elena Haidt on this run. They both have a much better sense of what's going on uh, on the course. And yeah, they both had a tough time on the first runs. It was really interesting seeing the respect all the other competitors had for Marie. Nobody wanted Marie. Bang, there you go. Big mute, catching the landing perfectly. Not quite enough speed for the pillow. Tomahawking, but let's see, is she okay? Yeah, she seems all right. Seems all right. Probably going to be shaken, but she seems good. There's that map. Yeah, you called it, Jeff. There it is. Yeah, she's just gathering herself, isn't she, after that slam, I think. And a bit of fatigue, I think. You can hear the exertion um, when she went off of that. Well, it's a really good point, because when you've got, I mean, any, any snowboarder in the world's going to empathize when you've got snow this heavy. It's just draining, isn't it? And navigating the, essentially, it's getting a bit chundery, I'm sure, through those tracks. Yeah. That right there might have been my favorite. Favorite of anyone's run yet today. Just blasting through the moose brush. I love that. Totally fine. <laughs> I don't know what happened though with that lip. <gasps> Classic Marie France right there, just always a smile on her face, so positive. 
And we go to her competitor, Elena Haidt. Again, one of the most storied competitors in the half pipe who has really already made a name for herself through uh, Ode to Muir, uh, Jamie Anderson's Unconditional, and last year where she was a quarterfinalist here at Jackson. I mean, her progression into one of the, you know, the strongest backcountry free ride snowboarders in the world has been one of the kind of great stories over the last five years, hasn't it, in women's snowboarding? I totally agree. When her first season diving into the backcountry around her home of Lake Tahoe, she looked like such a natural. She had such power, and as you mentioned that earlier, that edge control and finesse uh, garnered from the half pipe. So see how she approaches this. I don't think it matters what particular particular type of background you have coming into natural selection, especially today, but you are digging deep into your bag of tricks to make something work on this course. She's kind of got the option to play quite safe here, I, I would suggest, really. And that's part of the calculus as well, is, you know, this is only the first round. Yeah. There's two more to go through. This is a popular line coming in right here. I think she's headed towards Lando's hip. Yeah. Probably didn't quite get the landing she was she was looking for there, really. I think the challenge with that feature is that it, it's one of the most fun features on the course, and you kind of get drawn to it. But on the other side of that, it gets beat up the quickest. Yeah. There's only so many landings on that on that uh, hip. And with snow this grabby as well, if you don't actually really nail it, get your weight right, you're going to struggle. Full Whoa. send. You can tell how grueling it is. When we see the riders coming in to the bottom, they're all immediately getting off of their back leg. You know their back leg's just burning and they're breathing heavy. This is so much more than just a contest run. None of us would ever ride this whole face like in one full shot trying to hit as many jumps as we can. And I feel like I need to stop, maybe take a break, have a coffee in the middle, a snack, <laughs> before I continue on. can't underscore that enough how intense the riding is for all of these women and, and men. Yeah, and Matt, like you were saying, like she, she kind of had the opportunity to maybe play a, a little bit safer, a little more conservative. Um, and whether that was her approach or not, she still had trouble with the landings. This course is really, really challenging. Yeah, is that tranny that she just quite, didn't quite nail? And I think, too, worth pointing out that these are the best snowboarders in the world. Like, these, these individuals are incredible. And when they are having any trouble landing in these conditions, you know it's gnarly. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is kind of a behind the scenes to a film shoot, right? Like, when we see the videos and the clips come out, we're just seeing the best of the best and the ones that, that have I been picked popped, for us. I think, and I just threw myself off. Nice. <sighs> we survived. Barely. Oh my gosh, as if, as if, as if. <laughs> oh, amazing, we are going to One a tiebreaker. So both of these awesome individuals will head okay. back to the nice top one, I guess. Go. and go one more. They each came ahead once, and now we are back at the top for our single tiebreaker for women's quarterfinals. Marie France versus Elena. Marie France will be dropping in first. Whistler Local, she's from Quebec originally. Legendary backcountry rider. And here she goes. I think fatigue's gonna play a huge part in this, isn't it? Three runs, test anybody really on this course. Marie France has been having trouble with that. She's, she's really struggling with the course today. And I think, I don't think any of us thought that would be the case coming into this. I thought, I thought, uh, 
She may be handling it a little bit stronger. There we go, taking a new line for her over the eagle's nest. Big risk line right there. You know, the eagle's nest is one of my favorite features on the course, and it's so cool to see kind of some of the riders kind of veering that way and adding that into their lines. And also, you know, I have to say, being able to see it from the top through that GoPro 10 angle on the drone really is a really rad perspective. Yeah, you can hear, you can hear it on the cam, on the mic, sorry, can't you? There we go, getting oh, creative. Yeah. Well, there we go. A couple of switch turns. A really nice, playful little end to the run, that, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's a, you know, it's a clean slate for Marie-France and Elena. Um, and strategy is a big part of this. There's no, they're not falling back on previous scores. It all comes down to this run. And so riding every bit of the course that you can before you get to the bottom is going to be really important. So cool to see the friends down there. I mean, those women, they ride together all the time. If you haven't seen Full Moon from a few years ago, make sure to check that out. And we are back at the top with Elena Height. Last rider to drop. As you said, Jeff, this is a clean slate. Whoever takes this one advances to the next round. Very excited to see what she will do. Matt, what do you think is going through Elena's head right now? I think she's just really going to be wanting to be consistent and just be calculating her approach. I mean, if she puts a run down, she's basically got a really good chance of taking this, hasn't she? There's definitely a huge advantage to being the second rider to go in these matchups. I think so in these conditions, for sure. There we go. That was beautiful. Wow. I mean, that's a great start, isn't it, right there? That's got to be a confidence boost for Elena, for sure. I was just thinking the same thing. That's a, a great way to start off. That, you, you, you pointed out, I mean, it's that, that feature. It's just getting more and more challenging, really, the more beat up that landing gets, isn't it? It so is. To actually, so actually find the right line. The, the find the Lando's hip? <laughs> yeah, and we can see there's still some landing there, but you're definitely going to have to punch it to get out to the end of it, and then that margin of error becomes smaller and smaller. Nice. There we go. I think that little washout won't affect her that much. Um, the air looked great. She got her grab. She rode away. But it was the little bit of a washout trying to slow down. I think those are the kind of things that the, the judges distinguish between. that insight to the post run. What it's very unique to this contest. And I think a big part of what's going on in, in what we're seeing is that a lot of these professional athletes put so much time and effort into maintaining a really high level of fitness. Snowboarding isn't what it used to be, you know, a number of years ago. Like these are really world class athletes and today uh, that strength and conditioning is really playing a big part in their runs. I really like the way Marie ended this run. It's really nice to see this little bit of creativity, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a great start. That gives a really good perspective on how that big, how big that first jump really is. Yeah, you can really see from that angle like how beat up that landing's getting now. As you said, that margin for error is just going to keep getting smaller as the day progresses, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Elena with a great looking method, but tough landing there. Elena put a lot of effort into making sure her airs look good. She's grabbing her board. Yeah, she and she put that down really nicely. Like really solid landing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Tough to call. What's she thought, Jeff? 
know, I'm gonna. And Elena Height will move on to the next round, besting Marie Francois in these quarterfinals. Wow.